That's like 20 behind me, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's I mean, more speed than you, Trotty. <laughs> Without doubt, I mean, wow. that is... That's killed. A power that move. That wasn't too bad. That was for a first one, that was... Yeah. I mean, we're here for power moves. Maria Farsi, Rory McIlroy. I don't think I'm going to say much instantly out the gate. You didn't need warming up much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see in there? I mean, I mean, it's just, it's so efficient, right? I mean, I think one of the great things about Maria, I haven't, I've watched her play a handful of times and only been in her company a couple of times but just that separation you know she gets to the top of the swing and then just the leg drive and the movement and the separation she creates is i mean that's i mean it's like a slingshot and that's so why tell us the like separation that. explain expand on that so um so i i think you know younger people and kids do it better than anyone else um i think you know when you're a youngster the strongest part of your body is your legs. And then as you get older and maybe, you know, do some more exercise and get in the gym, your upper body starts to catch up with your lower body. But for younger people, you always see they get to the top and then the only thing that they can drive with is, is their lower body. So I, whenever I say to someone, you know, I want you to move your lower body better, go watch a 10 or 12 year old kid. They do it the best. So it's, it's really from the top of the swing, it's just using it's using the ground, using everything, all your strength at the bottom to, to get into a position where then your upper body can just follow and act like that slingshot. So like there's a separation there and then it just frees up your, your upper body to, to come through and hit it like that. So hit another one for us, Maria. Are you conscious of any of that? I mean, is that, do you think that? Do you, do you, do you need to know that? No, I mean, and I think, I've been lucky with the coaches that I have in, I've had in my career that nobody ever like try to change my leg action. Cause yeah. I know of people that they're like, oh yeah, your legs are too fast. Maybe the club can fall behind and they kind of try to correct that by slowing my legs down. But I've actually been very lucky with people just staying away with just, okay, we'll try to find a way for your upper body to catch up. But my legs have always been fast and I guess like, well, I'm still 22, so hopefully that stays with yeah, me for exactly. a few more years. But it's just, I mean, I know I swing from my legs and then the arms and club just follow, but it's honestly more of an unconscious th like thing than me actually being like, okay, let's use the legs or, or and whatnot. How, so. When did you start playing golf? I was seven. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. From, so it's in there. It's yeah. natural. Yeah. You don't think about it. You know, all of us that are you know, playing the game at a high level, you know, most of us started young and yeah. it's just sort of been, it's in there. When you start younger, longer clubs, we talked about it a little bit before, there's a tendency sometimes the mass of the club can pull you back here. How do golfers avoid that? Because young kids, that's speed. So mm -hmm. how do you avoid the trap of back? So, but back is fine as long as you as long as you turn. turn yeah. yeah. You can, you, I mean, you can be stuck, but if you have a really good body rotation, which, you know, most kids do, yeah. if you're here, you can catch up. I mean, and that's what, you know, I, I'm not as underneath as I used to be. You know, and I, I see, you know, videos of myself when I was 16 and the, the club was here, but I just had so much body rotation that I matched it up. Yeah. And was able to, able to do it. But I mean, it's maybe not a most, most consistent move, yeah. but it's gonna be the move that gets you the most speed. Yeah. Maria, in a green light situation, this tee shot, let's, you know, you've got your parameters. Imagine there's a fair way out there. Mm -hmm. Anything you change if you really need to hit a big carry? I think I just try to get a little bit wider, tilt my shoulders a little bit more and just swing as hard as I can. Basically, I, I'm not scared to just go for it. I mean, again, if it's a green light situation, I know I can miss it both ways. And I just kind of try to see a high draw and feel like I'm hitting like up on the ball and usually usually works out. Let's see if I can get it to go far on this one. Yeah, okay. That's so good. There's a definitive change in, in I mean, I saw it, yeah. right? And, and yeah. you can touch on that. Yeah, I mean, I, like 
everything that Maria said there, right? I mean, wider stance, tilt your shoulders a little bit so that, you know, your spine angle is tilted a little bit away from the target so that it encourages you to hit up on the ball. Changes the low point. Changes the low point. You know, your attack angle will probably go up a couple of degrees. And we all know that, you know, up, you know, that's how you optimize your ball flight. You know, and we, you know, through TrackMan and through all the stuff that we do, heading up on it, high launch angle, low spin, that's where you're gonna get the most distance. It pivots nicely for Rory. If you hit some Maria, you come and take a stance next to me. I know uh, your T height to me. High. You, yeah. Yeah. What's, what are you thinking there? Maybe you can allude to that. Obviously now with the forged aluminum ring on that driver, the movement of the weight, are you feeling anything in these initial days of hitting it where you, you can really leverage that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've always liked a high tee um, because I, you know, my low point is a little bit before the ball. So I want to try to hit up on it. I sometimes get a little too much that way. And, you know, you can sometimes you'll hit a decent drive, but you can see that the clubs just sort of scraped across the ground yeah. mm -hmm. a few feet before the ball. So, um, but yeah, I, you know, I've always been a small, I was a small kid. I'm a small guy and I, I have to try to use everything I can to hit the ball a long way, you know, so it's just, I, I just tried different things as a kid and I thought the best thing for me was, you know, to get the club sort of behind me and really pu push in and then almost like feel like I jump up into yeah. it. You know, that's, yeah. you know, and head up. Show us one, Rory and I'll, Maria, I'll let you break this down and what do you see as an athlete and a player? That's like 20 behind me, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was good. Yeah. I mean, I think and it's just looks very natural and comfortable. I think we are seeing more and so these days than ever before, like people are getting very technical or going Definitely. the complete opposite route and doing crazy swings. I mean, we have Matt on the team where he has a completely different swing, but I think I don't know, a couple of feet before the ball, we are all in the same position. We're all kind of, the clubs are leaving behind us, our hips are open. We're all kind of just facing the target as the club's catching up. Um, and I think that's, in my opinion, kind of what creates a lot of power. Um, yeah. I think that we were saying, like you try to jump on it, it definitely looks like you just kind of try to use yeah. your legs as much as you can Ex and exactly. use the ground and, and get speed that way. That was nice. It's money there. Yeah. What are the, is there a single, I guess single best and then single longest drive that either of you can recall in a pressure situation that you remember? You recall where this was demonstrated and it was like, it sticks out, you know? Um, First tee Ryder Cups or something where- Just trying to make contact. <laughs> um, I think for me, uh, Valhalla in 2014, I hit a shot off the 16th tee on the final day and I killed it. Absolutely just <laughs> hammered it. And it was one of those where you needed to hit a good tee shot and just it was full commitment, full speed, didn't guide it at all. And just, you know, green light. Yeah, exactly. Green light. I think for me, it was last year at the national championship, uh, there's this dogleg par four that's not really a short par four, but if you take a enough aggressive line, you can get there and um, just hit this amazing, nice high draw and uh, caught the green. And it was pretty cool to do it at, at home at nationals. Yeah. Fantastic. Create one more for us then, Rory. Let's see All it right. go. And one of the things that, so I've, I've sort of been trying over the last couple of months to get a little more speed. You know, even thinking of, you know, Augusta and some of the bunkers that you're able to take out of play if you have, you know, that sort of 320, 325 in the air. So one of the things that I've found with trying to get even a little more speed is if, if I can just think about, t you know, and this is, goes against all traditional golf teaching, mm -hmm. try to take it back quicker. You okay. know, you know, it's, they'd say sort of low and slow. Like if you, if you take it back quicker, it has to come down quicker. 
It's just the ratio of How do you time back... the transition though? Is that hard? It is hard, but I think if you practice it enough, you become a little more comfortable with it. My next question there would be, Maria, I don't know what you're thinking about this, but how do you then go, that's great if it's a power move off the tee, here's your super long tee shot. But then you leave yourself with a field shot, side hill lie, wedge, nine iron. Is that a hard transition to make as players between the bomb to the field shot? I think it is on the range because, you know, you've only got maybe a few seconds between hitting a shot and then hitting the next shot. But yeah. on the golf course, you're walking four or five minutes. You know, yeah. if you hit one really good, you're going to be the last one to hit into the green. Your plan partners are going to be way behind you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, at least you have time yeah, to sort slow of down get, and... slow down and get back into mm -hmm. the rhythm of a wedge shot. I think as amateurs, there's a feeling when you drive it beyond people, it gives you that ego feeling, yeah. you know? We alluded to it off camera, but you know, the giraffe and you, you feel good because you're, you're feeling big, long, yeah. but you keep yourself on the ground as you alluded to. How does that transition in the game as a pro? Is it, does it even come into your mindset? I mean, it certainly makes you feel, I mean, it it feel, you yeah. feel good when you hit a good drive and you're past your plan partners and mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to shoot the best score, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a type of validation in that. And, but it definitely, like, it makes the golf course easier if you can get it out there. Yeah. Finish off for one, right. one Rory. It's a, I always marvel at seeing you guys hit golf shots, and the sound and the launch and the flight is unbelievable. I mean, if you hit it long like that and straight, it's hard to beat. Both of you, do, I think it's safe to say there's just no hope I'm even getting there and listening to it. I need some more rotation back 35 years. But great spending time with you. Thank you. Hope to see more of these Cheers, power moves as we go. Yep.